The Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this board game review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're taking a preview look at an expansion that's coming out to Kickstarter for Coldwater Crown called The Sea, which was designed by Brian Surrey and published by Bellwether Games. Now, if you don't know how to play Coldwater Crown or are not sure what that game is about, I did a video review and a how to play and how to set it up. I will put a link to that in the description below if you want to check that out. This video is just going to be going over uh, the expansion to Coldwater Crown, again called The Sea. Now I received this uh, review copy and while I think most of the components are probably finalized, I don't know that for sure. So some of the components you see might change, uh, rules might change, but uh, it is set to come out to Kickstarter soon. So I will also have a link to that in the description below once that is available. Uh, but the sea is going to add a new fishing area, a new way to score fish that's different than the other three areas in the game. You're also getting a new Master Angler card called the Squid that you can try to catch. Uh, there's also an additional bonus token uh, that you can grab as well. So why don't we take a look at what comes into in the expansion and how it plays and I'll give you my thoughts on the other side. All right, let's talk about what you're going to get in the C expansion. Uh, the first thing you're going to get is this uh, board extension, very gorgeous board. And it's going to go right here because it adds to the port action. It also continues on the scenery from the base game. You see you have a, a boat right here and the port um, lines up uh, perfectly there. You're also going to get some new Master Angler Challenge cards. Uh, these are squid. And uh, these cards uh, can take three or four, but they'll, they are wild, so you can put any type of bait on these with a caveat, which I'll talk about in a second. You'll shuffle those in with the other cards, and then when you deal them out, It'll be just a new master angler fish that you can take. You also have a new set of fish that will be at the sea. So you have uh, the pollock, the red sea bream, the blue shark, and the cod. So you'll shuffle these. There's uh, five of each of them. You'll shuffle them, place them here, and then place them out just like you would any other region. You also get three uh, new bonus tackle tokens. These are anchors, and this bonus action allows you to take a free port action by discarding this on your turn. And finally, each player is going to get a fishing boat. Now this boat comes in uh, three pieces, uh, so you will put them together, and this boat here is not, so if you wanted to get creative and have your boat sinking or, or whatever, you could set it up that way. But each player will get one of those that they'll use when they are at sea. So those are the components that come into the box. Let's talk about how this uh, expansion adds to the game. All right, the sea adds an additional spot where you can fish. In the base game, you have the lakes, the rivers, and the shores, and now we've added the sea. Now the sea works a little bit differently as far as end game scoring in that unlike the other areas where you will be given the most victory points for catching the most weight of unique fish at each location, at the seas, your victory points at the end of the game is going to be determined based on the pounds, how many pounds of unique fish you caught. So all players, you know, if they were to catch 36, between 36 and, and 48, would be able to get five victory points. All right, so how does the C work? Well, for a port action, so if I had this here and I was going to go to port with a two, you can still, you know, refill uh, a couple of spaces or take a couple of cards or a combination of the two, but now you can take your boat and come out to sea. That takes one port action. Now, while you are at sea, you can only catch fish at the sea. 
you are not allowed to catch fish at the three other locations on the main board. Since these fish are wild, anytime you remove, let's say I ended up removing these two green from five, I would now take this blue shark and place it. Ooh, 18 pounds. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, you would take the uh, blue shark and put it into uh, with the rest of your fish. These fish do count towards the eight unique that you're trying to get uh, to get the points that are listed here. And they do count, of course, towards the t first two 12 fish. Now you can use any of your tackle while you're at sea, except for the rod. So if I caught this five, I could not go to one of the other uh, five zones and catch a fish there. Now let's talk about the Master Angler Challenge cards. Let's say, uh, let's say these were the three that I was working on. I had a squid, dogfish, and char. And by the way, when you are at sea, you could, or when, whenever you do a port action, you can take any card. You don't have to be at sea to take a squid and vice versa. Uh, you can take this anytime. So let's say these are the three that I'm working on. And let's say, again, I go back and I've removed both of these green. While you are at sea, you are only allowed to put bait that you've removed onto the squid. I could not put this on the dogfish. Okay? So when you're at sea, you can only fill up the squids. The same goes with if I'm not at sea and I pull these off, I cannot place them on the squid. I'd have to put one on the dogfish and discard the other piece. Now the, uh, the squids are worth one point at the end of the game, just like any of the others. And of course they can be used for three of a kind or uh, the four different for the Master Angler Challenge. Now to come back from sea is a free action and you can do it at any time during your turn. It doesn't matter. So for example, I could do something like this. I could take my two and place it on the green to remove all green bait from uh, from here. Since I'm at sea, I can place these here like so. All right. I've now caught this blue shark like we mentioned earlier, zone five. I'd also pick up a, one of the tokens. Of course, we would shuffle these in with the rest of them. You wouldn't know which one you were getting. So I've now caught a blue shark. I could now come home. All right. So I, I could leave the sea, like I said, anytime during your turn for a free action. I could then, ah, let's get rid of this for illustrative purposes. I could then take this yellow, remove this uh, one piece of yellow. I'm not at sea any longer, so I could place this on the char. And then I would catch whatever the zone six fish is uh, that normally would be here. But uh, for this review, I did not fill all those up. No way. And I would catch that fish here. So that's how you can uh, maximize your efforts at the sea and on the regular areas as well. So that's pretty much it. You get the board, you get the new cards, uh, a new way to score points, you get some new bonus tokens, a uh, new master angler, and you have these little boats that you can use out at sea. That is all that it adds to the base game. It adds a nice little bit of strategy to it without really making the game uh, any more complex. So I'll talk uh, more about that in my final thoughts, but that is the expansion, The Seas. All right, so that is The Sea, the expansion for Coldwater Crown. Now, like the base game, uh, the components are beautiful and well-made. Now, there is one exception that I'll talk about in a moment, but the artwork is really amazing here. And even, uh, uh, you know, you have the, the new box cover here. You know, when you put the two together, uh, it continues one one scene here. Uh, so it's a nice little design choice. Also, um, the board itself also extends the panorama of that, uh, that beautiful area. And the colors are vibrant in the game. Uh, the base and the, uh, the uh, expansion, that's continued on. And really, this game has a very nice table presence when it's set up because of how uh, gorgeous and well-made the components are. Uh, the expansion, if you wanted to fit it into the base box, it, the components will fit. 
Uh, there's not a lot of uh, additional components in the you know that come in the box that you couldn't put them in there all right so I did say there was one exception in the components and that's going to be the ships now they come into three parts that you uh, need to put together and then you are able to on the on the ship here it has three notches so you could have it going up or going down or staying on top or whatever and I mean it's an interesting looking uh, ship but the problem is is that these components are just too fiddly I think they're also maybe a little too large because if you have multiple boats out at the sea it, it can block the view for the cards on the board especially for someone who is maybe you know sitting opposite of the area um, now I've been told that these will be tighter because every game I've played people have picked up their boats and they've just fallen apart personally I would have preferred to see maybe a wooden boat or a plastic boat that you could put on and and not have to worry about these components that aside though I don't want it to detract from the rest of the components which again are well made and look really good all right so what about the gameplay well I like that it adds a nice layer of strategy without adding to the complexity of the game there there's enough additional stuff there to give you that that additional variety that you would want in an expansion it gives you a different way to score as well additionally it doesn't add to the length of the game uh, you now have you know more places that you can fish to get the eight unique or, or the 12 total that you need to trigger that end of game and so it's kind of nice that the expansion just it doesn't add to that length it, it keeps it the same while adding some more variety a little more strategy you see you never have to go to the sea in this game you could play the entire game like normal never fishing out at the sea but if your opponents go out there they are going to be picking up valuable crowns uh, that you will be leaving on the table i like that you have to make sure to have effectively time your trip out to the sea you can always come home from the sea for a free action but you must use a port action to go out to sea which means that you really want to make sure you have it timed right that okay this is the time that I want to try and catch some of these fish maybe finish off you know one of my squids here and then get back to try and catch the necessary fish that you need from the lakes and the river and the shore as well so for me, I really enjoy this expansion. I like the good looking components, and it's the ships, uh, the added strategy and variety and the different ways to score. And, and certainly if you're a fan of Cold Water Crown, then I would recommend picking up the C and just adding it even for new players because uh, you know while, while testing or playing with this new expansion recently, I've taught some new players the game and they've all picked it up very easily like i said it doesn't add to the complexity but it does add some nice strategy and variety so uh, i would recommend it so if you want to check out the uh, kickstarter again i'll leave a link below uh, so that you can check that out and uh, i just want to thank you for checking out this video uh, if you like what you saw leave a thumbs up or uh, leave me a comment subscribe to our channel and once again, I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for visiting the Arch Gaming Network. For more great content, check us out at archgamingnetwork.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.